If you're looking for a new website, head over to anyspositionshow.com slash zimventures to check out what Rob has for you. Uh, he makes some amazing websites. He's working on mine right now. And if I can trust him, you can trust him to put out good content. So anyspositionshow.com slash zimventures. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Hampshire Business Show. My name is Chris Pastrana, and today I'm here with Kristen Hardwick of Kristen Hardwick Photography. How's it going? Hi. Glad to be here. Thanks yeah, for having good. me, Chris. Yeah, definitely. So let's learn a little bit about you and your business and kind of where it all began. Thank you. Um, so I'm a branding photographer, which is a little bit different than um, a lot of the photographers in the area. Um, I started my business over five years ago. We just had our, our fifth birthday. Um, and I was in corporate America for eight years prior to, prior to going out on my own. Um, and I thought I would be in corporate America forever. I was climbing the ladder feeling like that was a good thing. And then I had my first child and kind of realized that I didn't want to be stuck inside a building for 60 hours a week for, you know, for, for her life. So I decided to build a business. Um, and since I already owned a camera, I felt like that was the easy, obvious choice. Yeah. Um, so then I spent a couple of years getting really, really good at photography. And then my second child was born, my son was born, and I wanted to quit my day job, like we all do. And I couldn't because while I had gotten really good at photography, I hadn't learned how to run a business, which you need both. Yeah. Um, so then I spent a couple of years learning how everything I could about business and, and marketing and really fell in love with the marketing and branding of my own business. So when I did go out and quit my day job, um, it kind of naturally led me down that path of doing this for other people. Yeah. So it was, it was a journey, it wasn't straightforward. I didn't start out thinking I was gonna be the headshot queen, but. <laughs> This is kind of what it's evolved into, and I love it. Yeah. And it's a really cool area. Um, it was actually one of the reasons I wanted you on to begin with, because yeah. um, I think a lot of people forget about branding a lot in these issues. So they're running a business, and, you know, they have their logo, they have their stuff, but, you know, if you're a small business, like, that's it's you. Like, it's you're the company. You. It's you. And there's a, been a huge trend in the past couple of years to – um, get away from trying to look like a big business to people really want to know who they're doing business with. So even if you're selling cars or or a health product or whatever it is, whatever widget you're selling, ultimately people care about the people behind the product. And so helping people present themselves as a polished brand without trying to be somebody else has been a huge focus for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also when I started out, like photography was my widget, right? Like that's what I was selling. And I forgot about the running of business and marketing myself and the branding myself. And so now it's nice to be able to do that for other people who are selling whatever it is they're passionate about and help them with the piece, the, the branding and marketing piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like you were saying, and it was actually one of the big reasons for starting the show is people constantly forget like the why behind their mm. business. So, yes. you know, it's, it's you, it's your story. It's um, you as the person that, you, know, you come on the show and we talk about these things to get it out there yeah. and people just forget about it and they don't talk about it and they're like oh i have this really nice thing to sell you and right. i'm like well i want more are you trustworthy are you you know all this stuff right and, and no like trust factor is so important and yeah. i think that part of my why is i love small business so much like uh if any of my friends tell me that they have a business idea i'm the first person to jump in and give them <laughs> unsolicited advice on how to, <laughs> how to market it and bring yeah. it, you know, and get it out there. So I truly do love small business, which is great because my entire business is built around helping other people be successful, Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, definitely. So let's get into that a little bit. Because you mentioned branding photography is different than um, normal photography. So yeah. like some of the differences, like what do you do? So... When I started out, and I think a lot of photographers go through this evolution, I thought I was going to photograph newborns or weddings or families or insert whatever it is that, you know, you think that you want to start with. Mm. And then, as it turned out, I hated shooting all of this. <laughs> or I liked them for a little bit, but then I didn't want to do it every single day. So branding photography is completely different because it's thinking about who your subject is, what they want to be known for, what attributes of themselves in their business they want to be portrayed, and then creating a visual story that lets that message come through without any text. It's so creative. You get to work with so many different people, and even though I'm doing the same type of shoots over and over, yeah. because my subjects are always different and have a different story and a different why, it's, it's never the same thing twice, which yeah. is so fun. 
So we do hair and makeup, wardrobe consultation, branding consultation. So we, you know, we ask the questions such as, what is your why? Who is your target audience? Who are you trying to connect with? Um, asking all those questions. And then we design the photo shoot around that. Yeah. So it feels a little bit more like a commercial shoot, but for, for the little guys. Yeah, it was really cool. It's so I fun. think it's a great area to, to focus on. And I had another photographer in here, I think it was a, like a month or so ago. Mm -hmm. and Cause she's, I asked her, I'm like, oh, why do you do, you know, weddings? And she's like, well, that's where the money is. So like, it's kind of funny that you mentioned that you just hate doing them because that's what most people kind of gear towards. I think, but, yeah, and I mean, weddings are a big money maker, but it's like anything in business. If you structure your costs right and your yeah. pricing right and your value right, I'm happy to be paid for what I do. And I, yeah. I, you, I don't shoot weddings because... If you're gonna have, if you're gonna hire someone to photograph your day, they should be so happy and thrilled to be there. And for me, it was a job. It was just another job. Yeah. And so I felt like I owed my brides more, so I stopped doing them. Hmm. Yeah. I also didn't want to give up every single Saturday during the summer because oh, I yeah. have small kids, yeah. and that's kind of how successful wedding photographers make it. Yeah. Their, their season's a lot shorter. I don't have a slow season, which is crazy and awesome and wonderful. So like. When some of my clients have slow seasons during the winter, that's when they have the time to have me in and photograph them and, and do their headshots. Yeah. And then when spring and summer rolls around, everybody wants to be photographed out so outside. So we're we're moving outdoors. So yeah. there's really no like downtime for me. It's really much more of an even workflow, which yeah. I love. Yeah. And I love the creativity behind it. Yeah. Because I'm not a very good photographer, more amateur level, but I do some photography and um, that was my other question for the other photographer I had on is like when you're doing a wedding it's kind of the same thing every time like you have those same shots that every bride has seen that she wants and yeah but with what you do like you said there's no limit to it because it's just how do you make the business represent the business yeah and that's that's really important we've um we've also taken uh the social media angle a lot lately a lot of my clients okay. need content so like you have you have your headshots right and your headshots are good for a year or so and those are great for your speaker bios and any interviews you do any media features but you also need so much more visual content in today's world where people are spending their money and their efforts on social media marketing so mm -hmm. creating you know a portfolio of images so that every day they have fresh content or content that is, you know, in their colors and, and on brand and telling their story versus going to stock photography websites. Yeah. And, you know, spending hours trying to find the right image on a stock photography yeah. website. So we've definitely been doing more of that and that's opened up a whole new world of creativity, which I love. Yeah, definitely. And um, I was speaking to a guest about some things that New Hampshire's kind of missing. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have Boston, you have New York, Miami, you know, LA. LA. There's kind of a style that you associate with big businesses out there yep. that you don't have in New Hampshire. Now, what I always tell them is they need to get with the times. You yes. Know, if New Hampshire really wants to pick up, they need to start treating their businesses like the places that do phenomenal business. <laughs> I think, yeah, and I think that we have this really great undercurrent of entrepreneurial energy, Yeah. Um, specifically in Nashua, which is where I'm based out of, but I see it on, in, on the coast too. All these... I don't want to say this, the side hustlers because it's not necessarily side. All these people running their businesses yeah. that are kind of bootstrapping and they're coming together to create this community and we're working together. And those are the people that I love working with the most, the people that are still hungry and excited um, and just have that vision for what the business could be like in five years. So I agree with you. We're not quite there yet, but there there is a lot of energy and buzz yeah. that's making it happen. It's a big change from even just two or three years ago. Yeah. And like I said, I'm... We recently ramped the show up from like three episodes a week to like seven, so I do like one yeah. of these every day. And I've been seeing so many more people who are willing to get on camera and talk. And because, like you said, you know, they realize they need to take it to the next level, mm -hmm. but there's kind of a lack of businesses that can show them how to do it. So, That's, between like yeah. people like yourself and me trying to like push them into this field of yeah, you got to compete with the big boys, you know, let's get you on camera. And <laughs> it's awesome. And so I actually tell people all the time that if you're not willing to stand up and say what you do and who you do it for, people don't know that they can hire you. Like you can be the best surgeon in the world, but if you mm -hmm. don't tell anybody, you're not going to, you're not going to make an impact. You're not going to go yeah. out and get to do the work that you're meant to do. So you have to kind of get past that whole, I'm not ready for camera or it's, 
not even a shyness, but you just have to be willing to put yourself out there yeah. so that more people can hear your message. Yeah. And like, like you said, you know, you get the best business in the world if no one knows who if you are. They knows can't about buy it. from you. Exactly. <laughs> even if they wanted to. Right. So then you're not making money and you're also not serving the people that you're supposed to be serving. Yeah. 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 It's very cool. So let's talk about the services you guys offer. Yeah. We've, we've talked headshots of a couple little things, but kind of like what uh, what do you guys do, like packages, whatever, any of that stuff? Yep. So we have kind of three tiers of service, and it depends on your budget and your needs. So we start with just a basic headshot package, and that is you know quick 30, 30 minutes, gives you two outfits. You walk away with two final images that you get to pick from, you know, probably 10 final or 10 finished images that we'll edit and retouch for you and those can be done in studio or outdoors um, just within you know walking distance of my yeah. studio downtown Nashville has a ton of different locations so regardless of what your brand is or what your vibe is I have it near my studio that's very cool it's awesome um, then we do social media mini sessions which are the next level up which are not headshots they're not portraits of yourself but they are more the behind the scenes content. Um, so you're getting professional photos of you working or your product or what, um, you know, if you interact with clients in a coffee shop or whatever, whatever additional content you might need to tell your story beyond your headshots. So it's like a small package. Yeah. And then, and those are, I don't want to say seasonal, but those are definitely, you get a portfolio of images that's good for three to six months. Um, but you would want to, like you'll go through that content and you'll want to refresh it after six months at least. Um, and then the full lifestyle branding shoot is meant for people that are speakers, authors, people that are, are ready to stand up and, and be seen as the expert in their field who need full website images, banner images, uh, detail shots about me, social media. That's basically the whole kit and caboodle. And that includes your hair, your makeup, wardrobe, help, branding consultation, like everything that we could possibly do to set you up for success so that you can go out and, and Go into the world and tell people what you do and go on a full PR press. Yeah. Yeah. That is super awesome. Which I love. All of that. Yeah. It, it sounds like a lot of fun. Which, oh, yeah. And it's kind of funny that you talk about this because, um, like I said, I do some photography stuff. And yeah. when I had originally started this business, it was mm -hmm. actually for videography, so like commercials and stuff. Yeah. But I kind of got away from it. <clears throat> I actually have a service I've... Uh, I've never done, but it, it's called social media paparazzi. And it's exactly what you're talking yeah. about. And I'm like, send, oh, cool. I don't have to do it. I can just send them to... <laughs> just send them to me. It's, that's a great name for it. I might steal that from you. It's, Go ahead. It's, it's, it's think, so awesome. It's so funny. Like, you see Instagram influencers or people that are making the name with social media. And uh, somebody has to take those photos. So you can kind of struggle through yeah. it and suffer as you're trying to teach your husband or your best friend to do it. Or you can just spend an afternoon and get it done right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of my big goals further down the road is I want someone on staff who, like, their job is to create content. Like, it's awesome. <laughs> it's yeah. so fun. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty awesome. So let's see. Yeah, so about 15 minutes in. We'll do a quick break here for our sponsors. Uh, so everyone just hold tight. So I am super excited, everyone. I'm currently down about 20 pounds, <laughs> 15, 20 pounds in my weight loss journey. So... Head over to anyexpressionshow.com slash ideal to learn more about the ideal system that I'm on. Um, my goal is by the end of October to be down the 140 pounds that I want to lose. Um, hopefully about 140 pounds. If I keep losing them, about 20 pounds a month, I'll get there. I'm really excited because it's, it's an easy system. I'm not having like any difficulties with it. And we're just watching the weight just go away. So... Head over to anxiousbusinessshow.com slash ideal because by the end of the year or by summertime's coming, you know, you could be in the body that you want. So, it would be good. Now that now we've gotten through a little bit about your business and stuff, I got some questions here from the audience and then probably some other things I'll ask and then uh, yeah. we'll move on from there. Let's do it. Cool. Awesome. So, first one is... What is the biggest obstacle you have faced, and how did you overcome it? Uh, professionally or, like, in my life ever? Uh, I will just say professionally for the sake professionally. of Professionally. I think it's the same obstacle most of us face. It's having <clears throat> the mindset that you can succeed, right? Like, we all want to build our own things or, or, or go after these dreams, and we have to kind of get over the hurdle of, can I do it? It's yeah. Like, it's the mental battle that we all face. 
Yeah. So that's that was my biggest for the longest time. I felt like I could either be really successful as a photographer um, and not make a ton of money, or I could make a lot of money, but I'd have to stay in my corporate job to do it. And so knowing, you know, that I could do both has been not my corporate job, but like do what I love and still have a profitable business was a hurdle for me. But yeah. we're there. We're there. We're here. I like that. That, that self sabotage that kind of happens there is like it crushes a lot of businesses. And I see it in every single person I work with. I think it's so universal, but I mean the people that succeed and outlast, you know, that one to two mark are the people that can push forward and have the faith. Yeah. So that actually brings up a kind of a funny thing because I, I totally know the feeling you're talking yeah. about because I started this podcast and then, you know, a little while afterwards, it's, it's how you're sitting there, you're like, can I really be that guy that's successful? Mm -hmm. And then it takes a while of, you know, uh, I don't think I can be that person to finally break through and, you know, you kind of got to fight through that. You do. <laughs> and, and. The advice that I give other people and myself, this isn't actually, like I still have to tell myself this, it's like, if you are gonna play small and not stand up and say, yes, I will be that guy that's successful at the podcast, somebody else is gonna do it. Yeah. And you're gonna miss out on your opportunity to help the people that you will help by doing it. Yeah. So you have to take one for the team and try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just gotta throw yourself in there and go for it. You know? Someone's gotta do it, might as yeah. well be you. Yeah, um, so let's go on to the next one. What is your favorite and least favorite part of owning a business? Ooh, my favorite part is, I like everything, I love business. I love sales, I love, I think my favorite part is meeting new people. I would have to say that I've met some incredible people on this journey that would not be in my life, that are really truly close friends now, yeah. if I wasn't on this journey. Um, my least favorite part is probably everybody's, the, in, the, chasing of invoices and the, you know, the bookkeeping and the yeah. QuickBooks. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, the boring stuff. Yeah. I think we're on the same track there. Yeah. Like finances, I hate doing that yeah. stuff. I but, just want to make pictures. Yeah. But there's, <laughs> there's nothing better than sitting down and talking to people. Right. And they like, this is, I love this. Right. But yeah, the finances. Uh. Yeah. I mean, someone has to do it, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And eventually someone else will do it. <laughs> yes. It's so worth it. Hire, yeah. hire that out. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So uh, what organizational tool and technique uh, can you not live without? Ooh. Trello. I use Trello like a crazy person. It's an app. Um, <laughs> I use it for my workflow. So I move my clients so I, like through my specific workflow so I know that no steps get missed. I have one for my personal life of my running to-do lists. Um, anytime we're traveling, I put my packing lists on there. I have the app on my phone and my desktop. Um, yeah, Trello. I'm Trello. a huge fan. Cool. Awesome. So that was the questions the audience has provided for us. Yeah. Um, let's talk confidence. Okay. Because we've gotten into this probably a couple of times already. For a new business or a new entrepreneur stepping into the ring, yeah. And but they're worried about, you know, cameras, video, all that stuff. What do you recommend as far as confidence goes to help them kind of maybe get a step up there? Um, my answer is twofold. One from an emotional standpoint, I would say, remember your why. Why do you want to be on camera? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to talk about your business? Why do you why do you even want to be in business? Um, so knowing that and knowing that it's about more than yourself helps you kind of get past that fear of, of of, oh my gosh, I'm not good enough, to knowing that you at least need to try. Secondly, practice in the mirror. Um, work with a photographer who knows how to pose people. Look at um, Pinterest, search. I mean, on my website, I offer a posing guide. You can take steps and learn how to look better on camera. There's definitely, uh, there's definitely tips and tricks and Everybody can take a great photo, everybody can look good in a photograph, and everybody can look bad in a photograph. So it's just doing your homework beforehand and working with people that want you to look your best all the time. Good, mm. I like it. Let's see, Cre creativity. As you mentioned, your whole business is super creative. Yeah. You hit snags where you just kind of lose it and just yeah. can't figure it out. <laughs> I Absolutely, I think, and I think everybody does. And um, one of the a piece of advice I was given when I was first started starting out is that if you're going to be in this for the long haul, if you're not going to just be a photographer for two years, but as, you know, 10 years, 50 years, whatever, um, there's going to be those times. And so you have to have a way to either come back to basics when you are 
not feeling creative and just go through things that you know will work to get the job done, or you have to find a way to really turn the creativity back on. And for me, I always just try and see what's fun, silly, not, maybe it's not gonna work, but we live in the digital age, so I'm not afraid to try things that could be totally horrible because I could just delete it after. <laughs> and thankfully, I seem to attract clients that understand that and are willing to do silly, goofy things to get the perfect, great shot. Yeah. And oftentimes those silly things that I'm like, let's just try this, it might be awful, are the, are the keepers, are end up being the banner images. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's I fun. like that. Um, so how do you get through the creative blocks? Yeah, I think you might have touched on it a little bit, but you know, for me, it's as bad as it is. Typically, it's alcohol and yeah. you know, just doing something a little crazy. Yeah, and you know, get all that going in a good conversation. Um, but other people are different. So <laughs> and I less destructive. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I do like alcohol. Um, yeah. We're big craft beer fans, yeah. um, so I I have no problem with that. But yeah, I think getting out of my own head. Yeah. You know, you can sit there and agonize and be like, oh, I have no good ideas. But like you said, like having a conversation with somebody else or I'm super visual, obviously. So I love magazines and I will go and check out a different magazine or um, I try not to find inspiration for my own industry too much because I feel like that quickly becomes um, a breeding ground for copying. But I will go and find inspiration from other industries, whether they be fashion or sports or food industry just something outside of my immediate circle to broaden my my own horizons yeah i think creativity ruts happen when we are looking at the same work over and over and a lot of times if you're not intentionally going outside of your immediate circle that's gonna keep happening cool mm. awesome so people that want to reach out and get you know get in touch with you get your services how do they do so um, you can find me at kristenhardwick.com. Uh, on Facebook, I'm at Kristen Hardwick Photography. Or on Instagram, which is my, my one true love, it's uh, at Kristen Hardwick Photo. Okay, awesome. So thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. And it, was, it was a little shorter, but we got through a lot we, pretty quick. <laughs> I'm a fast talker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It was great. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, so thank you, everyone, for, for watching and listening. And until next time, be good. If you want the best audiobooks that are available on the market, head over to anyprojecto.com slash audible to start your free trial today. Um, they have over 180,000 books. Best guess, they have what you're looking for. So check them out.